The keto diet is back. This time, it's challenging for the almighty lifting crown. Let's see what some new research has to say on the ketogenic diet's impact on your strength gains. There's no doubt that one of the most popular non-traditional diets out there is the ketogenic diet. And in terms of the actual science, the keto diet showed that it can be quite useful. It's even great for developing your whole personality around based on outcomes in certain strange corners of the internet. The only thing, though, is that you probably shouldn't expect anything all that special with the keto diet. The science shows that, yes, it can be good, but only as good as any other diet. Well, that's at least for body composition goals like weight loss, fat loss, and muscle growth. But what about the goal we're here for in the first place? When it comes to things like crushing three plates on the bench, four plates on the squats, or eight plates in overcooked two, can the ketogenic diet provide an advantage over higher carb diets? To find out, we're going to take a look at a new study, a systematic review published this year. With strength gains in mind, the researchers here focused on analyzing keto studies that specifically measure changes in one rep max performance for, of course, the two most bro-approved exercises of all time, the bench press and squat. The comparison was between the ketogenic diet and a more traditional high-carb diet. They identified five studies totaling 119 participants for the bench press and five studies totaling 106 participants for the squat. The participants were a mixture of both trained men and women, the trial interventions all lasted between 8 and 12 weeks. And finally, my favorite caveat, the diets were all protein matched. So what were the results? For the bench press 1 rep max, both diets led to better results with no statistically significant differences between the two. For the squat 1 rep max, both diets again led to better results with again no statistically significant differences between the two. In other words, just like what we saw with the body composition goals, this study showed that the keto diet performed no better nor worse than a more traditional diet for the bench and squat 1 rep maxes. You know what? This is actually a bit unexpected. Sure, results like this make sense for body composition goals since consuming fewer carbs isn't as important for body composition as your calorie and protein intakes. But for performance goals, carb intake usually does factor in quite heavily. Arguably, the most important energy source for an activity like lifting weights is glucose, which we get almost exclusively from consuming carbs. Historically, the ketogenic diet, a very low-carb diet, tends to lead to worse exercise performance, and the lack of carbs is believed to be the main reason why. But if that is the case, then why did this new study show the keto diet performing just fine? Well, it's probably because the study looked at specifically one rep maxes, whereas other studies measured outcomes utilizing more than just one rep. Thing is, the role glucose plays in a single all-out effort activity like a one rep max is really not all that much. For about the first 10 seconds of any intense physical activity, our bodies employ a super fast energy system known as the phosphagen system. The system is not fueled by glucose, but by creatine phosphates in the muscle cells. And yes, if you are wondering, the reason creatine supplementation helps you lift heavier weights is because it directly supports this system. So for one rep maxes, we don't need to produce a lot of energy from carbs just yet. So being on a keto diet is not all that bad. That said, I do want to point out one more thing. Although not statistically significantly different, the study did show that the size of the effect for strength did trend in favor of the non-ketogenic diets. Thing is, although a one rep max might not rely much on carbs for energy, the training itself throughout the 8 to 12 weeks to improve one rep max definitely does. So that means the non-keto diet participants might have experienced better conditions during their training. The researchers did note that training volume was not all that different between the two groups, but did note that in some cases, participants on the keto diet felt that their training required more effort than participants on the non-keto diet. Whatever the case, we should still respect the methods of science and the use of statistical significance, p-values, and all that jazz, so we shouldn't draw strong conclusions from this trend alone. And now, to finally answer the question, is the keto diet good for getting stronger? The answer seems like yes, but is it anything extra special? Probably not. Is it worth giving up pizza and ice cream though? Well, that's a personal call. Is it worth giving up kale? 
Yes, the answer is always yes. If you enjoyed this video, then please give it a strong thumbs up and share it with your keto loving friends. Subscribe for more and let me know what you think in the comments. As always, thank you for watching and don't forget to get your protein, whether it's keto diets or anything else.